Welcome to episode 268 of the official Game Stitch podcast. I'm Ryan Walton. As always, I'm joined by Dan Reamer. It's another beautiful Sunday here. In, it is at the Game Stitch HQ. Western New York. This fucking place. So Wednesday, it was 60 degrees. Thursday night, I got eight in, 18 inches of snow. That sounds right. Does it? Does it sound right? Does it really? For you... For your area. Oh. I thought, that sounds I thought right. you meant in general as a way of life. No, it sounds... 18 <laughs> inches sounds super wrong of anything. That might... Anything, that might, you hear that me? That might depend on who you ask. No, anything. <laughs> There's never a good 18 inches, like rain, snow, anything. <laughs> if you're like, hey, I poured you 18 inches of cereal, you're like, that's too much. What about... Ooh, I could go for an 18 inch slice of pizza, though. I think that's too big to handle the right way. Oh no! You f- Eighteen inches. You fold it through. Yeah, it's that's foot and a half. A, yeah, foot and a half. A slice of pizza, a foot and a half long. Yeah. No, that's too big. You just fold it. Yep. No. Eighteen. You're wrong. I, I, Even subs are like they they most of the time cut off at fourteen tops. I, I'm I'm afraid I have to disagree with you. Eighteen's uh, a large sub. It, it would be a massive piece of pizza. You need someone to hold the front of it while you ate the back. No. Or hold the back while you eat the front. No one eats back first unless you're a psychopath. No, or with a fork, might I add. If you eat pizza with a... Here's a PSA. If you eat pizza with a fork, you're an asshole. <laughs> yes. That, no. Yeah, that's... That, that, yeah, that's game stitch. That, that's a game stitch thing. That's a... And don't don't tell me, oh, well, it's too hot or it's too... I don't care. No, I don't care don't about any of that. And don't cut it with a knife. Don't do any of that right. shit. Right. You fucking pick that triangle slab of fucking greasy awesomeness and you shove it in your maw and you go it's supposed to drip grease on your hands you fold it you can fold it it's fine yeah you do fold it i'm a big folder of the pizza um uh, but where i differ from most is i'm a big thin thin crust kind of guy i don't like a deep dish i don't like a deep dish either i'll take but i do like a little bit of a thicker crust not the i don't like like a fucking tortilla wrap crust yeah i like a cracker crust yeah, no and when i fold it i like to hear that snap i like no, to hear it pop no no because the cheese will, will create a natural natural hinge but no you're doing it wrong yeah. just so you know no it, it creates a natural hinge and and then when you when you snap into it you're getting a little bit of everything that crust almost acts like a skin no you need a Good. you need the thick crust that is just has the garlic butter put on the bottom so that it gets nice and crispy and tasty that's what you need they can do that with a thin crust too it's, no it it doesn't no we're not doing the saltine cracker crust i'm not doing it you're wrong yeah that's where it's at you're wrong you're doing you're wrong I'm just let us know over on twitter at game underscore stitch how do you do your pizza we don't really care we're just curious yeah don't tell i'm curious don't tell me you do the cracker thing like ryan because I don't think right. I'll, I'll, I don't. So I'll take it a step further. I get thin crust and I like it cut in squares. Oh, see, I don't think you realize how close we are not being friends anymore. This could be our you last. Snap those. This could be our last podcast if you keep you it up. Snap that little square right there in half, and it's perfect for uh, your mouth hole size. Okay, unless you're buying a sheet pizza, it should always be cut in triangles. But triangles is less convenient. It's the way it's supposed to be. I say, I see. I buck the system. I do. I do what I want. No, you do it wrong. If it's if it's wrong, they wouldn't offer it as like you can click online when you order. You can click cut in squares. I know you can. It's that popular. You never should. It's that popular. It's an option. Yeah, but you're also you're talking like Domino's, Pizza Hut, those places. Those aren't pizza places. That's all. It's down here. That's not. I know. That's not fair to I say. Know. It is fair to say there's still not pizza. No, because you don't have good pizza your, down your snobby there. New I know York I used to right live now. there. I know you you're don't have your, good pizza. You're doing your snobby New York and thing. You like, don't have like you haven't had real pizza. And you you haven't, and you don't have good subs. You don't have good delis. If I went up there, I would say cut it in squares. It, and you would get it in a triangle. They would just hand it to you. It would come in a. I guarantee you, there's places that'll cut it in squares if you order a whole pizza. Guarantee. They don't give a fuck. They just want their money. It could. You shouldn't. They'll, You're not eating with me. It, you won't be eating with me. They'll cut it in you rectangles. Can come up here if that's what all you're by after. your fucking self and eat pizza all by yourself. 
in obtuse triangles, if that's what you ask for. They don't care. Just trying to make a buck and a pie. Depends if you get a sl- if you get a slice, you're getting it in a triangle. That's it. That's because it's pre-cut. Game though. over. You don't get to talk about that. I'm talking about if you walk in and order a whole pizza. You can say cut that bitch in a smiley face, and they'll be like, whatever. As long as I'm not around and you don't embarrass me, I guess I don't care. But they probably would high five me if I ordered that way for just doing something. They different. would not. They would not. But I'm no, anti high five for take, everyone listen, who's listened before. We take before. pizza serious up here, okay? Yeah, it's but it's like customers always right. It's just like if someone down there and said, Squares. "Hey, I want biscuits and gravy with brown gravy." It's the same, same, same concept. But if they had brown gravy up here, they'd be like, "All right, that's just wrong." It's not. It's like I want biscuits and gravy, but I want them. I want. I don't want the edges. I want it cut in a square. They'd be like, "Okay, whatever." It's the same thing. It's the same item. You're just cutting it different. And some places down here make square biscuits. Oh, uh, you're making me sick to my stomach. We need to talk about something else. A square biscuit makes you sick to your stomach. You should probably see a physician. No, the, I'm still on the pizza thing. A square pizza makes you sick. Also, I would say doctor. No, it's it's making me sick. Um, I would knowing say. that doctor. We are. We were friends at one time. I'm about to lose a friend. It hurts. Over pizza, that seems that seems childish. Gotta say, I've never claimed to be a grown up. Seems childish. I'll start there. I've never cl- I've claimed to be a grown up. I've never claimed to be a mature one. So speaking of childish, I played Super Hot VR this week. You did, yes. And there's something like almost like childlike and fun about it. like you feel like a like a badass. And it's it's very simple. Um, I think most people have probably seen a screenshot for Super Hot, but it's all white. Your enemies are red. Anything you can use as a weapon is is black, but it's like over the top. Uh, but in the best way. Now time. So like you might time doesn't move unless you move in that game, right? Like nothing right. happens unless you move. So when it starts, you can kind of look around, but every time you look around to see what's going on, they move a little bit. But it does this weird bullet time. Like, there's a trophy for dodging four bullets at the same time. It's called the chosen one. Mm-hmm. But it's crazy because when you, like, bend back to let the bullets go over you, you can hear, like, the noise as they pass, like, by your face. And they have, like, a little trail on them. Um, you can also catch them, catch the bullets out of the air. Oh, that's neat. You can hold any, anything in front of them. You can block them with a gun. Side note, I can do that in real life. And, like, so when a level starts out, it may start out with a guy standing right in front of you and you have a pistol. Uh, there's like something super badass about holding that up to the back of that guy's head, and they explode like into like the, they're almost like pixel people. So when you when you they're like rough polygonal looking people. Whenever you kill them, they explode into like pieces. Okay, but it's not like a body. No, it's like it's it's more like a crystal breaking. Okay, um, they shatter would probably be a better word. But there's something neat about like pulling that and then immediately having to like panic and look around, seeing where the next guys are. You can also punch them. Which is pretty cool because they'll come in and swing on you and you can duck it and then come up and swing on them and they just shatters their face when you hit them. But it's, I felt like a little kid when I was in there because it's like a John Wick simulator. Which is the closest I'll ever be to doing that. To being John Wick. <laughs> right, because I don't feel like murdering 300 people. So this is the closest I'm going to get to to actually doing that. And I assume they're bad guys because they're trying to get me. They could be the good guys, and you're the bad guy. Then they'd still yeah, be trying to get you. Yeah, but that's not how I choose to. That's not how I choose to believe. You need- and there are there are there's always stuff around. So like, I killed a guy with a stapler. Nice. Like I grabbed a stapler, tossed it at him. Um, but when you when they have weapons and you kill them, it automatically launches their weapons towards you if you're close enough. So you can just grab them out of the air. That's so cool. Like gun kata. Yeah, but it's slow. Like time's not moving. And as you reach your hand up, the gun starts coming closer to you, but slowly. Or you can just throw your hand up really quick and catch it like real time. Like you decide how fast or slow you do everything. Uh, but there's there's something badass about like grabbing a bottle, tossing it into a guy's face, him throwing a shotgun up in there, you grabbing it, and then turning and blowing away his two friends. Like all in like this weird simulator type world. Mm hmm. And the game's really, like pokes fun at itself. You know, you're putting a helmet on in the game that takes you into this world. Um, so it's got like a fourth wall type deal because you're going in VR in the game. 
right to stick a floppy in the computer to load the program up um but it's it's super super good it was on sale i've wanted it forever but it was too expensive i thought um it probably wasn't too expensive but i did finally get it cheaper i think i got it for 18 bucks i think it's normally like 27 or 28 or something like that now super hot is is available without vr it is, but I can't imagine that it's the same thing. I would imagine it's probably not either, but... They are actual different games, so this version is not playable outside of VR. It is a VR, and there's a super hot, super hot VR. Okay. Uh, they do sell a combo pack that gives you both of them, but there's no way this game feels as good. There's, I don't know. It's super good. Shoot somebody out of a helicopter and see them fall down and shatter. Like, it's just cool. Uh, and you jump around from scene to scene, so... Like, as you jump to the next scene, everything you just did is still happening in the background because everything is in slow motion. Right. So you're hearing stuff break, and you turn around, and it's where you just were. Uh, and it's it's just neat. It's uh, well done, and uh, if you have VR, you should pick it up. Because um, I, I, I re- very much enjoyed it. We, did you say we? No, I said I very much enjoyed it. Oh, I it. thought you said we very much enjoyed it. I was like, who, did you share play it with somebody? What? Maybe me and the the headset. Maybe you guys are buds. Me and me and the move controllers, right and left is what I named them. <laughs> uh, maybe we enjoyed it. I played something else. Oh, switch switchblade. Switchblade beta. That's right. Switchblade beta. So, if this is wrong, uh, you can let us know. But I think switchblade is a car moba. You were telling me about it, and I can't honestly tell you. And I haven't. I didn't there, look it up. There are lanes, uh, which I understand MOBAs have. There are, like, car bots, the NPC things that go out, which I understand MOBAs have. And then there are these towers you have to destroy in order to get to the main tower, which I understand MOBAs have. So I think this is a MOBA. But it's different because you're in vehicles. So think, like, an arena-style twisted metal where kills don't really matter because it's about objectives. It's about destroying. Right. Getting to where so you need to get. You have to escort your bots to these towers. Then your bots blow out the doors. Once they blow out the doors, you can destroy the tower by shooting it a bunch. But until you get your bots to the tower, you can't do anything, any damage to it. Um, and, and you can place turrets and stuff like that. And you can also, of course, you can drive wherever, shoot wherever. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get two different vehicles. The vehicles all have upgrades that you run in real time. Um, I'm, I'm playing the beta for it. I don't know what it'll cost, um, but it's actually kind of fun. Now, I don't know that I'd want to play it every day. Matches take 20 minutes. You're not really a MOBA guy, are you? I don't know. I mean, the only one I've ever tried is Smite. Uh. Um, I didn't love Smite. I also didn't understand it, and it was very competitive by the time I jumped in. Right. This is, like, brand new, and I feel like people are playing it like it's Twisted Metal. So if you're an objective guy, you can clean up right now. Right, if you do it. Right, if you actually know how to play the game, you're you're the superstar. Right, so step one is to escort your bots. So they're trying to kill your bots. Their bots are trying to kill your bots. And you've got to escort them to get them to a tower. Mm-hmm. Uh, then once that's done, you've got to get back over to the tower if you die and try to destroy the tower, and then you move on to the next ones of trying to escort the bots there. So you've got these these lanes right, left, center, and you're just trying to get to the different towers and get them blown up so you can take out their main core. So that's how you win. If you don't win, that's whoever has the most points. You get points by destroying those things. Right. So kills don't matter at all. Um, it's still cool to kill somebody, and it still helps to get them out of the way. Uh, but they're not really the objective. But I thought it was fun. It has a lot of customization. It does have a co-op versus bots. Um, it has, of course, the regular style, you know, PvP. Uh, but it's uh, it's kind of neat, and it looks pretty good. I don't love the way they handle, but I understand why they handle that way. Uh, your driving is all on the sticks, your throttle and everything. Uh, because so you have to shoot, stick- and you have to do all that, so... right. So, but the cars are all built in such a way that they can drive forwards or backwards, same speed. It doesn't matter, uh, and you can rotate your turret around to shoot any direction. So it is it is easy to to navigate. The cars react pretty quick, and they're different speeds depending on the kind of vehicle they are. Uh, but I thought it was pretty neat. Something something new, something new for you. It would you. be a, gr- a great PlayStation Plus game uh, if they were to give that away. 
Um, it might even be good as a free to play game with some microtransactions built in so they can make a little change. Mm. Um, but I thought it was fun. I like what you did there. Yeah. You did a little bit of foreshadowing on, on this week's show. Maybe I did. <laughs> maybe there's maybe there's in app information in this podcast. <laughs> did you play anything else? Um, he, just a little bit of Rocket League. Uh, up and down with that. I took some time off, so coming back was rough, but finally starting to get into a rhythm mm-hmm. again. Starting to win again. Uh, got the rank back about where it was last season, so everything seems to be going pretty well there. Uh, I played a small amount of, of Horizon. Still struggling to get back into that. Not because I don't like it. I just don't remember well enough what how to do things. Give yourself about 10 minutes, 10 good solid minutes. Just... Don't worry about. No, I played like two thirty-minute sessions, and I still don't. Really? I just get straight killed by everything because I can't remember how to play. Um, wow, I did not have that problem so. at all. Right, but I've gone a a year basically. Well, I had gone eight months at the time. Yeah, it's a lot longer though. Yeah, yeah, four months. That's a long time. So it was eight months. I, I, I would assume that I would have been sharper four months ago. You probably would have. Right, so I just don't remember the strategies. But I feel everything like, kills me pretty much immediately unless I run. I feel like the four minutes there, the the four months is not comparable to the ten minutes it took me versus the hour it has still has taken you to still not get it. I don't feel like those are fair comparisons. Maybe you're just better at it because I'm still not comfortable back in there at all. I guess that could be. I didn't even think of that and, to be honest. And, and advancing like the story seems impossible to me right now because of how uncomfortable I am with the controls. And what I did is I just went out and I I went to a campfire that was like out in the middle of nowhere when I first got back into it. I went fast traveled to one of the campfires out in the middle of nowhere and I just went out hunting. I would check. I mean, that's what I've been doing. I've been I've been hunting stuff and I've been killing watchers. Uh and most of those I've been doing silent takedowns. But if I get near anything big that sees me, I'm pretty well dead because I can't remember how to fight it. Like, I, I know how to fight. I don't remember the the keys to taking down certain things and what I had figured out back uh, then. Ah, okay. Th- I can see. That's that. where I seem to struggle the most. So it's, it's an information thing, but I plan to get back into it. Also, I've been neglecting my Switch a little bit. I want to get some more of that um, going on. And of course, we're getting we're inching closer to see a thieves. I think it's like I don't know, sixteen days or something mm-hmm. now. Yeah, I have Sea of Thieves pre ordered. I'm not sure. I might just go Games Pass. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. Yeah, I've not pre ordered. Um, I could at any point, and I've thought about it several times to get the early access stuff. But I also haven't started my live yet because <laughs> I want to wait. I want to wait for that till I'm ready to play every day. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I think I might Games Pass this too. As much as I love physical media, the game's not playable without internet. Right. It would serve no purpose to have it and not have internet. Right. Uh, so I might be okay having this digital and knowing I'm only going to have to pay ten a month because I don't. I want to do Games Pass anyways. Yeah, so I'm I'm leaning closer and closer because there's a lot of games for my Xbox that I want to play that I just haven't. I don't want to play enough to pay for. <coughs> so. <clears throat> Yeah, I still want to play the, the um, whatever, Halo Reach, is that, that, whatever it was. Guardians. Chief Collection? Guardians. Guardians. Uh, I still want to play Guardians. I want to play Gears 4. Uh, I want to play Halo Wars 2. I, I do not want to play Halo Wars 2. I don't like those. But uh, Yeah, I enjoyed you know the, that, the last one a little bit. You know, and Sea of Thieves coming out. Uh, they're going to have Crackdown 3 coming out. So they do have some stuff that's coming that I think will make games, and that's already there, to be honest. That I think will be, uh, I think I think I'm going to go the Games Pass route. There's also other games that I wanted to play that I don't want to pay for, that seem to be available on there. Uh, my first, you know, DMC is my first. I never wanted to pay for that. That's never been free, and it's one I've wanted to play, but I've never wanted to pay for it. And with Games Pass, I feel like I don't have to because I'll be getting my ten dollars worth out of the stuff I do want to play that I probably would pay for at the right price eventually. So, uh, Sea of Thieves is, is a $60 game. So if you games pass it, that buys you six months. Yes. So in that six months, if you play literally anything else, you're adding to the value. Yep. So even if it's a $10 game, that's one more month that you just paid for. Right. 
So I think it's a safe bet. You're going to cash in on half a year just by playing Sea of Thieves because I was going to buy it anyways. Right. Um, so yeah. even if I only play a couple things, that's fine because I bought myself six months worth of time technically. Yeah, it's, it's kind of how I'm looking at it. Uh, yeah, other, so I think that's how I'm going to go in. Um, I had kind of a weird week gaming this week. Um, last couple of weeks, really. Uh, you made a comment about Shadow Complex Remastered. And oddly enough, my nephew did too when he saw what I was playing. You both said, what a weird game to be playing. <laughs> well, it's just because I knew you had, had played it and it seemed not like something you were going to jump back into with so much else to play. Uh, like so, so many other titles. I did, though. I I picked up picked it up on the PS4, uh, Shadow Complex HD Remastered. Uh, I had played it on the Xbox One. Or on the Xbox 360 and had never gotten around to finishing it. I still actually have it on my Xbox, but I was like, you know what? HD, more challenges, apparently money to blow, so why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> Big fat wallet. <laughs> so I picked it up, and uh, it. Well, I think it was better in HD. It, it looked... Obviously, the facial animations and stuff weren't great. They still looked, even though they were the quality was better, they still had that wonky look that stuff on the 360 had. Uh, but uh, other than, everything else looked great, the the backgrounds and, and all that. Uh, and I, I finished it, which I didn't do when I played it on the 360. So I was pretty excited about that. And... Uh, for some reason, that's a, 2000, that's a 2009 game, though. So it is you, the idea right. that it looks great at all is yeah, it, is probably speaks to how much effort they had to put into that. Yeah, it really does look really good, um, and uh, I got the itching to play The Witcher again, The Witcher Three, which I started and never finished. Uh, I still have it, but I didn't want to pay for all the DLC, but I want to play the DLC. So, in my, I don't know, moment of genius or moment of weakness, depending on how you look at it, I went and picked up the complete edition for 20 bucks on the store, which includes all downloadable content ever. Right. You had, ran into that fat wallet problem again. <laughs> so apparently. Um, Let me buy a game I've already got again. Oddly enough, not really. Um what is an interesting thing, though, is that when you buy the complete edition, your the trophies from the original don't carry over. I literally have no trophies for this game. So you could platinum it twice. I you could platinum it twice <laughs> if you had like two to three years. I am not going to. To of time to set aside, you could platinum this game twice. But yeah, I just kind of got the earn got uh, the yearning to play just an old school action rpg and i was like you know what i liked the witcher and something happened and i got out of it i don't something else probably came out yeah i I, it it made sense financially when you said well i wanted all the dlc i was just confused when uh patman said oh dan finally picked up the witcher and i'm like nope nope he's had it (laughs) yeah (laughs) and he goes well really because he's playing the complete edition i'm like well i don't know (laughs) <laughs> but he for sure at one point already had that. I still do. Non-complete edition, right? Right. Yeah. Because we all had it at the same time. Yeah. Um, and if you go way back on our YouTube channel, you can actually see our Witcher Adventures. Yes, you can. Uh, video series. So I know that we all had Witcher at some point. But then when I talked to you, you said, look, I wanted the DLC, and it would cost me 35 to buy that or 20 to buy this right. game. So, yes. Uh, so it did make sense. It made financial sense for that, yes. Yeah. Um, so... And that's really all I played this week. Some Rocket League. Uh, yeah, so everything you played was at least two years old. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback week. You know, it's just not, there's just, I'm excited for Sea of Thieves. Uh, I don't think it's on the news, but Detroit, they finally announced a date for um, Detroit Become Human. Uh, there's just nothing right now that is exciting to me. But there is some things coming up that are excited 
exciting to me. So, and they start this month, actually. That might be foreshadowing too. <laughs> we got a bunch of news coming for you guys. <laughs> hot topic. Not to be confused with hot topic, which sells the the pop figures, right? And Funko Pops, Funko Pop. Yes. Topic. Yes. Yes. And uh, but mainstream gothic. Yeah, like non-gothic gothic stuff. Right. I feel like if you're gothic, you're like, no, uh-uh. Yeah. But if you're like, I'm yeah. sort of kind of going for that look, yeah. which isn't a bad look on some people. No, no, no. It's not. Uh, I agree. But that's where you shop. Also, if you like band tees, I don't know where else you can get them. It depends on the band. Because you can walk into yeah. an FIE and get like a Bob Marley t-shirt. Yeah, but we don't even have those either. But you can't walk into... Hot topic. You usually st- stuck with like a slip knot or uh um good old slip knot. I don't know. Apocalyptica, uh, you know, those slip knot still making music? I don't know. I, it was just a word. I, it was just one I, I just picked one. It's got me thinking about slip knot now. I don't know where they're at. <laughs> See there. Jeez. I can't think of a better time to jump into the news. <laughs> than right now. <laughs> so you remember Chris Lee, representative from Hawaii. Mm-hmm. We talked about him several episodes ago. Not a fan of the loot box. Nope, wasn't I don't that. Think he knows, I don't think he knows what it is, but he's not a fan of it. He's the one that said uh, Battlefront was uh, EA Star Wars Casino. Yes. Uh, however, it's also children. important to note that he has claimed to have played video games, which yeah. I feel like is an, is an untruth. So we talked about that. Then Maggie Hans Hassan, uh, United States Senator, called on the ESRB here recently to uh, address the loot box issues. Mm-hmm. So it's still a part of the ongoing talks. So the ESRB has responded. <laughs> and they have done uh, what I like to call as little as possible. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know how people feel about the ESRB, but I appreciate this move. Um, it's You know what it says? It says... You know what? It's appeasement is what it is. It's appeasement. Right. You know what? This is really stupid and we really don't care. But if it's going to shut you up here, it, it, essentially the ESRB is like giving cookies to their children to make them shut up. <laughs> what they've offered up is the closest thing to a middle finger that they could give. Um, and they have announced that they will incorporate a new label onto game cases, which says in-game purchases. Which I'm- and you think, oh, okay, now I'll be able to tell what has loot boxes. no. This applies to any game that has any in-game purchase. DLC. Skins. Skins. Any customization that you can win, purchase. A theme. Anything that you can buy for that game through that game. Avatars has an in-game purchase. Um, It's going to have a label. Because the SRB says that loot boxes aren't the problem. Parents just want to know... When little Johnny can still spend money on top of the money they already spent. Right. That's what the, yeah, That's what they say. They say the problem isn't with the loot box configuration. The only thing parents are worried about is, is my child going to want to spend more money on this game? So yes. they have come up with this label that says, probably. <laughs> uh, Patricia Vance who is ESRB president, says parents are not specifically concerned with those when talking about loot boxes, but the broader potential for their children to spend money in general. Yeah. This will be a separate label from the ESRB rating, so it will not be uh, as part of that where it says, like, you know, tobacco use, comic mischief. It won't be a part of that. Violent, strong sexual content, nudity, all that stuff. But anyone who is concerned, this is the equivalent of you downloading an app that says offers in-app purchases. Yes, it's a throwaway. Cool. Thumbs up. I'll have the, I'll have this game, please. That's right. Problem solved. Yeah. And the SRB is like, you're welcome, government. <laughs> if you need anything else, give us a shout. Yeah. We got all kinds of labels here. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. You need another label? We got plenty of space on that case. So I just thought it was... I just thought it, I enjoyed this because I don't, I don't think they, they slammed their heads together and this is the best they came up with. I think they put their heads together and said, what is the least amount of work we could do for this silly, silly, silly issue? And super, super cost. Yeah, basically what they needed to do is 
They literally had a group meeting and said, you know what? We just need to shut these people up. <laughs> right. Um, so how do we do that? We'll put a sticker on it. Yeah. People <laughs> like stickers, right? I love stickers. Especially when it's information. We'll put an informational sticker on it, and yeah. we're good. And right. they, they, I'm, they spent a minimal amount of money and took care of what they perceived as a non-issue to shut up all these people. That's essentially what has happened here. Like I said, it's yeah. it's parents giving their children a cookie to make them shut up. We're going we're going to do our best to avoid politics in the next couple stories. But I will say you you could just be involved in your kids' lives. That would probably beat any sticker that exists. Yeah. If you if you maybe just knew what they were doing. It's where it needs to start. Right. I mean, but Again, if a sticker is going to make the difference, if you don't buy XYZ for your kid because it's got that on there, good luck. Because every game that comes out is going to have that sticker. Yeah, but you're not going to be buying them games is what's going to happen. Right. Right. So, next story. This is another interesting one. Something. Uh, President Donald Trump says he's going to meet with members of the video game industry to discuss school safety. Now, so just take a second to wrap your head just around that. Now let's, yeah, and and there, there's an important part to this, um, that 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 we haven't mentioned yet, but nobody from the video game industry has actually heard from Donald Trump or his administration about this meeting, right? Including the ESA, um, or the ESRB. Yeah, none of them have. Right, I've heard so, from the not really sure who he's meeting with. Uh, maybe he's got Miyamoto. I don't like. I don't. Maybe he's got Reggie. Uh, yeah, who maybe knows? He's, maybe he's kicking Hideo? with Shuhei. Yeah, maybe he's yeah, hanging maybe, out with Hideo. Maybe he's a big Hideo fan. Maybe he's looking forward to Death Stranding. Who knows? Who isn't? But uh, uh yeah, it's a weird story. Um, but basically, uh. Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders said that Trump will be meeting with members of the video game industry to see what they can do uh, on that yeah. front as well when talking about, you know, safety. Obviously, the gun, guns is a hot topic right now. Gun control. There's a, yeah. But there's a lot of uh, shift. There seems to be a lot of shift trying to shift different things to blame it on from depending on what side of the aisle you sit on. Um, I don't know. I feel like no one's taking a big, good look at it, but uh, this is one of the things that have come up, that they've come up with to consider one of those problems. You know, this isn't the first time he's pointed a finger at violent video games following the shooting at Sandy Hook in 2012. He tweeted, video games violence and glorification must be stopped. Yes. It's creating monsters. Yes. Uh, Sanders did note that this is going to be an ongoing process and something that we don't expect to happen overnight, which is evident by the fact that they haven't communicated with anyone. Um, but we expect to be engaged and continue to look at the best ways possible to make sure we're doing everything we can for schools across the country. So uh, I guess the more concerning thing for me is that they're making a direct connection. Yeah, that's that's between my school safety and video games. Yes. And so, the, that seems to be where um like I, we were going to try to we're going to try to keep politics out of this, but you, the fact seems to be that the left is trying to is blaming guns, and the right now wants to blame media, uh, video games, movies. That that's been that's their talking point on the issue. Uh, what I believe, what Ryan believes, what you believe that's that's really not what we're talking about or getting into here, but. Uh, it's it's part of, it's a concerning issue on both sides that we're looking to just focus on blame as we are. It is worth noting, 2013, uh, Joe Biden, Joe Biden um, did have an EA CEO on a panel to discuss violent video games and gun violence as part of a water task force uh, that was looking into gun control measures. Yes, uh, EA, ESA president at the time was also. In the meeting, so this this isn't new uncharted waters. I guess it seemed more like a. I don't have a problem with saying, "Hey, can you be a part of this conversation?" I guess I have more of a problem with, "Hey, we're we're pointing a finger at these people, so we're going to see how they can fix it." Yeah. 
uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with having people from all aspects of entertainment because entertainment does play a part on, on the way people perceive things. Mm -hmm. But to say, I'm going to reach out to the movie industry because of the reason this is happening. We got to think about schools and our children. It's like, well, that's yeah, that's that's, a little general. Yeah. There's, and and I said it, I think last week when we talked about it, maybe the week before, but there's a a huge algorithm and yeah, it's, it probably is one part, Um, Mm -hmm. but you can't expect it now. Just if you take if you take video games out of the equation, things are probably still going to happen. If you take guns completely out of the equation, things are still probably going to happen. These tragedies. There's a whole amalgam of factors that need to be taken into account. They need to be addressed in some shape or form. You can't just take one and say, "Boom, problem solved." Unfortunately, as society, as people, we look for the easy answer, um, and sometimes there just aren't any. But and, and we joke around. This a lot is the types of things that happen. We joke around a lot, but obviously violence is, is something that needs to be addressed. I, I just think there are better ways to address it than to say, let's slap a label on a game or let's keep people from playing a game or let's not let a game exist. Uh, right. So, uh, we got one more serious story. After that, I swear it's back to normal shigan- shenanigans. I don't, I don't like... I don't like this next story. We'll get into yeah, it. Yeah, Dan's gonna get irritated on the next. <laughs> it's not as not gonna be as easy going about that as he was a sticker earlier. <laughs> so uh, earlier last week, a student in uh, Lake Park High School in Chicago uh, was th- arrested for threatening to commit a school shooting on social media. At this hearing, a judge ordered the teen to forfeit his smartphone to his parents and stop playing violent video games. I'll let you pick up right here. <laughs> You're gonna let me pick up on this right here. Um, oh, yeah. This okay. My my first question here is: How do you define violence? All right. If you've ever played Super Mario Brothers, Mario shoots fireballs out of his hands. Could that be considered violence? Mario Kart, you shoot turtle shells at people to make them wreck. Could that be considered violent? Um, I feel like this is very generalized, and I feel like it was it falls into that looking for something to blame. Well, okay, here we'll, we'll play we'll blame video games. You can't play don't don't play them. Don't play these violent video games. Uh, there's just I don't like this, uh, and I'm not sure the ins and outs of it, but I. Video games are protected by the First Amendment. That happened in 2011. Um, is it possible? I guess it doesn't know. Is this, is it playing them that's protected? Or is it creating them that's protected? Uh, I don't think that was clarified. But it's possible that there's even a constitutional issue here. Is Can you tell this kid that he can't play video games? Can you do that? Is that isn't it a First Amendment protection? Um, so, so there's a lot going on here that is really irritating, and I, I just I don't like this overstep of bounds. It's not up to the judge to determine to make that determination. It is up to the parents. It is up to the child. Uh, there's some other things here that Ryan will probably go into, but um, yeah, there's some other things that are involved here. So that's my take on it. Yeah. So when asked to elaborate on on which games would be allowed. Um, so, so this all stems from a Snapchat video where the threat was actually made. There was a game running in the background. Uh, nobody's quite sure what game it says that it was a post-apocalyptic war game. Um, but when asked about that, the, the message was, uh, you can't play what you were playing in the video, but you could play something less violent, play Mario Kart all you want. So not banning... Not banning from video games altogether, only banning from the violent ones or the ones, I guess, deemed violent by uh, said judge. Um, this is a rare thing. Um, and in, in some additional digging, um, it appears that the state att- assistant attorney uh, is actually the one who made this request and the judge just up- upheld it. Yeah, again, I'm not sure that that's, that's the place to... I don't know that it's his place. And, and and when when looking back at this, I don't even know how how do they monitor that? Are they going to be friends with him? 
Yeah. They're gonna tr- they're gonna exchange live accounts. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, I hear you. You know that that's it's just a flexing of the muscle. Uh, obviously, it, I mean, assuming assuming he did play a violent video game, I guess he could get. I guess he could get fines or maybe even locked up for violating terms. I don't even. This is yeah, I don't strange know. It's, and complicated. It's, there's there's a lot going on here that that is. It's, he it, can play Mario Kart where you shoot and wreck people. Right, right. But he can't play whatever post apocalyptic war game that he had. Right. right. Can he play Super Hot? Can I got to say no. Absolutely. Can not. he play Super Hot VR? I don't know. Can he play pinball FX? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, right. Right. It's very generalized. And uh, yeah, uh, I feel like there's a larger case here too. So I say, take this in front of the Supreme court and determine if it's just creating video games that's protected by the first amendment or playing that creation. Right. Um, Let's move on to some lighter stories. Sure. Let's talk about the games coming out for March. Okay. Um, sort of a lengthy list, but there's some stuff on here I've never heard of. Uh, but Bravo Team coming out March 6th. That's a PSVR. It's made by Supermassive, uh, the team behind Until Dawn and uh, The Inpatient. It's a rail shooter. I think it's a co-op rail shooter. It looks awesome. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 Royal Edition, March 6th. Frantics. Uh, March 6th. Oh, I should say that the first two are PS4. The second one is uh, Final Fantasy is everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, minus the Switch. <coughs> uh, Scribble Knots Showdown. It's been a while since we've had a proper Scribble Knots. It's, it's coming on everything. Yeah, coming on everything. Xbox One, PS4, and Switch. Fear Effect, uh, Sedna. PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch. Here you go, Dan. Devil May Cry HD Collection. <laughs> PS4, Xbox One, PC, looking to jump into something that's at least 10 years old. There you go. Shut uh, up. March 13th, uh, Gollum, <laughs> another PSVR game that I'm super pumped for. Obviously, PS4 only. March 13th, uh, Kirby Star Allies for Switch on March 16th. Yeah, right up Ryan's Assassin's day. Creed Rogue Remastered, PS4, Xbox One on March 20th. Attack on Titan 2, PS4, Xbox One, PC, Switch, March 20th. See of Thieves. Boom. Xbox One, PC, March 20th. Can't wait. Titan Quest, March 20th, PS4, Xbox One. A Way Out, another one I'm excited about. Mm-hmm. Uh, PS4, Xbox One, PC, March 23rd. I do want to comment on A Way Out real quick. This one's going to yeah. be a tough one. Because mm-hmm. uh, we all want it. Mm-hmm. But it's only two-player co-op. At a time, right. So who's going to get stuck being the odd man out? Who knows? <laughs> Uh, Detective Pikachu, 3DS, March 23rd. Nino Kuni 2, Revenant Kingdom, PS4, PC, March 23rd. You can't, can't wait for wait that. for that one. Uh, Pure Farming 2018. Oh, shit. PS4, Xbox One, PC, March 27th. And can I pause here and say the marketing, or the uh, the farming market on consoles getting a little crowded. It's, it is, yeah. There's a lot going on with the farming so, simulators. So, just to recap, because I know it's a lot for everyone. There's Farming Simulator, Professional Farmer... And now, Pure Farming. Pure Farming. I'm not going to tell you which one to buy, but Farming Simulator. Go ahead. That's read. March 27th. Yeah, go ahead and read the next one. Uh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's hard to say. But I feel confident in saying absolutely no one that listens to this show is going to even play this game. Okay. At, at, at the Lear... The Die and Sweely, The I, Alchemist and the Mysterious Paintings? I would say Atelier, Le Day, and Swell. Sure. That's PS4, what I would PC say. Switch, March 27th. <laughs> if, if you play that game... Uh, Tell us how to pronounce please, it. Yeah, please give us an um, <laughs> audio message so I can figure out how the hell you're supposed to On say On Twitter, that. at Game underscore Stitch. <laughs> Far Cry 5 on March 27th. I'm excited. For I'm excited for this one. Xbox One and PC. I Obviously, can't. that game getting a lot of good buzz. I can't wait. Uh, MLB The Show on PS4 for March 27th, and Agony rounding out the month on March 30th for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. That's a pretty packed month. What the hell is Agony? I don't know. Okay. I thought maybe pretty it was... packed month. I don't know if it was one I was supposed to know but didn't, or... 
No, but when when scrolling down through here, Bravo Team I'd like to have, Scribble Knots I'd like to have, Gollum I'd like to have, uh, Kirby I'd like to have, Sea of Thieves I'm going to have, A Way Out I'd like to have, Det- Detective Pikachu I'd like to have, Nino Cooney I'd like to have. I mean, it's packed. Yeah, there's a, March is where it starts now. Yeah, that's 180 bucks I just listed off. Yeah, give or take. So not gonna get all those. No, probably not. No. Gonna have to make some real life decisions. So I've been thinking about Nino Cooney a lot because I, I will play that game. Mm-hmm. Absolutely love the first Nino Cooney. Mm-hmm. You did. I think I can wait. Probably because I'll be playing Sea of Thieves. So I think I can wait on Nino Cooney. I don't think that's a problem. And I think that game will get cheaper. Detective Pikachu, it's got two things that are going to keep this game from ever being cheaper. It's got Pikachu in the name, and it's Nintendo. Yes. So good luck. That game will be whatever price it launches at forever. Which is still one you can wait on, I guess, because the price is never going to change. <laughs> and, and there's some other factors, too. Like, do I want to dig my 3DS out? I don't even know where it's at. Fair enough. Like, am I, am I going to be playing my 3DS? This should have come out on Switch. Um. So I could probably wait on that. A Way Out I would really like to play, but again, it's going to depend on if anyone else picks it up. Right. I'm not going to get that game until someone else gets it. Okay. Because there's no point. So if someone else waits, I can wait. Uh, Kirby All-Star Allies I'd like to have, but i got plenty on the Switch to play. Uh, Gollum, I'm probably going to get. It's a really cool-looking VR title for me. Probably really, probably for sure going to get that one. Scribble's Not Showdown I'd like to have. It'll drop in price. And Bravo Team I'd really like to have. But again, I think it's a co-op thing, so if I don't know someone else that's getting it, probably going to wait on it. Right. Well, here's the one I'm looking for. Here's the ones that I would do. Uh, Fear Effect Sidon I would like to get. Attack on Titan 2 I would like to get. Sea of Thieves I will get. A Way Out I will get once someone else gets it or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Uh, Far Cry 5 I will get. So, pretty packed month for me, too. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty not, expensive. Not quite as big as yours, but... Yeah, but so some of the ones I called out, though, were not $60 games. True, true. So, I'm pretty sure Bravo Team, Gollum, Scribble Knots, uh, Detective Pikachu, those those aren't full price games. Well, Fear, what about Nino Cooney? Yeah, Fear Effect is the only one that won't be. What about Nino Cooney? You didn't list that one. Well, no, I didn't. You're right. I didn't play the first one. I don't think you have to. I, I don't want the second one, though. I'm excited. I know you are. It's fine. All right. Let's, why don't you take us through the uh, free games with gold for March. March 2018, games with gold for the Xbox One. From March 1st to the 31st, we have Trials of the Blood Dragon. Uh, and oddly enough, March 16th to April 15th, we have Super Hot, which is not VR. It's just Super Hot. Same game, no VR. Uh, for the 360, which you can also play on Xbox, Xbox One, we have Brave, the video game, and Quantum a Conundrum. Is Brave that uh, animated movie? Is it that? Yep. That one? Yep. Wow. I believe so. So, uh, yeah. Microsoft... Uh, Kind of shit in the bed this month. So, super hot, a, a big title. I feel like Trials, in some shape, form, or fashion, whether it's that one or the other one, has been free for every system ever. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you the real problem here is Sony's lineup. <laughs> it's so strong this month that it... It, it overshadows tough. everything. Yeah, overshadows Xboxes for sure. So, March is free PS Plus games. For PS4, we've got Bloodborne, Ratchet & Clank, uh, for PS3, crossplay with PS4, Mighty Number no. Nine, uh, The Legend of Kai K. It's a Legend it's of Legend K. of Kai, is it? Legend of Kai is uh, a different game for the PS2. Maybe that's what I'm getting confused for. And for Vita, these are both crossplay for the PS4. We have Claire Extended Cut and Bombing Busters. So just to recap, PS4, Bloodborne, Ratchet and Clank, Mighty Number no. Nine, Claire Extended Cut, and Bombing Busters. Five. PS4 games. For the PS3, we have Mighty Number no. 9. I went through those already. I just Legend recapped of, them. Oh, you're just recapping? Okay. Yeah, just recapping. So I was helping. Yeah. I mean, you can recap them all again if you want. I don't need Let's to. Let's do the story no. twice. Uh, there, some information came out with the PlayStation Plus lineup for this month. It did. Uh, Sony announced it will no longer be doing 
Vita games and PS3 games next March. As of March 2019, so you're still good for another year. And no one, there should be no one out there that's like, you didn't give me enough heads up. <laughs> I would have been perfectly fine if Sony said, hey, next month we're not doing those anymore. But right. I understand, because you can buy a 12-month subscription, I understand why they needed to give you a year. Yes. Makes sense. Uh, they also, for anyone who cares, they sent out an email also explaining the changes and how to cancel it if you'd like. Yep. So... so don't be a Peter face and say that they didn't tell you how. I feel like they've been more than fair at this announcement because it should have happened last year. A Peter face? Yeah, don't be a Peter face. <laughs> is that is that what I think it is? Yeah, dick face. Okay. I, I, <laughs> it's just a kinder way of saying it. I thought so, but I wanted I to be sure. could have called somebody a Pete face just or, to make or, it even or, nicer. A pee pee face? Yeah, Pete face. But I mean Peter face. <laughs> Maybe the name of the episode, Peter Face. I don't know. Let's we'll see what happens. <sighs> the Nintendo Switch just turned one. Which is both good and bad, apparently. And to celebrate, they deleted your playtime. <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> or at least it appeared that way at first. <laughs> um, what a weird story. So everyone's playtime, or not everyone's, but a majority of people's playtime for games disappeared. Yeah. Uh, so people are like, cool, this only tracks for one year? Uh, because you know how people are. They're, that's a badge of honor. Yeah. How long, how much time you spent in the game. Yeah. So it does seem like, though, that huh. Nintendo acknowledged that some Switch owners' playtime have begun displaying incorrectly. Um, however, this apparently is only going to last 10 days. The length of time it normally takes for a game to actually show up on your profile. After that, all your game time will return as normal. <laughs> they did not eat it. They did not delete it. Seems maybe there's a lot of code somewhere that can be switched around. You might want to look into that, Nintendo. Uh, but um, <laughs> you can wipe the sweat off your forehead. Your Zelda time is still sacred and safe. God, it's... Uh, yes, you know what? It's kind of nice to see Nintendo slip on the banana peel every now and then. <laughs> you know? I love that. I love that. I feel like even they woke up and they're like, whoa. <laughs> Somebody yep. called Jerry. Yep. Shit. Mistake. Right. Mistakes were made. See if those are totally gone or not. <laughs> but, yeah, it seems that there, there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's there's candy at the end of the rainbow or gold or whatever is at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> it's it's gold. Story. It's not candy. It's gold. <laughs> it's my fault. Lucky Charms got in my head. <laughs> So that's still not candy. That's you're right. Cereal. It's cereal though, which is as close to candy as you can get for breakfast. <laughs> Those marshmallows are candy. I don't care who you Man, are. Man, you're a mess. What's going on right now? Because Nintendo <laughs> has done everything right and they just randomly deleted everybody's time. <laughs> Something so simple. How do you how do you mess that up? Just don't delete it. Of all the things you're gonna fuck up, that's the one right. you pick. The only thing you have to do for that is not delete it. <laughs> that's the only requirement that it has is just don't get rid of it. Just leave it there, right? That's all right. you have to do. Don't even touch it. Because it's a feature that I think every console should have. Like, the PS4 should give me the ability to see how long I've played everything. So should the Xbox. Yeah. It's a great feature. All you had to do was not mess with it. Well, now we, real, now we know why they don't do it. Apparently it doesn't work. Someone's <laughs> like, I'll just delete it. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. We're one now. We don't have to track yeah, that anymore. Nobody cares about that. Right, that was for us, so we knew if people were playing this thing or not. So, it'll, it, we should be good to go on that. It should be back. Uh, this next story, I just thought was something I wanted to talk about really quick. I played Birthday the Beginnings um, way back when on PS4. Uh, it was actually supplied to us by uh, NIS America. Not why I'm talking about this, but just so you know. Uh, but they have ported it to the Switch. Or they are porting it to the Switch. Here's the weird part. The game's called Birthday the Beginnings on PS4 and PC. The Switch version is going to be called Happy Birthdays. Yes. And it's going to be uh, not remastered but improved. And the reason I included this is because I think this game will be more at home on the Switch than it ever was on the PS4 or yeah, PC. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Or, or or maybe it was fine on the PSC. Definitely more at home than the PS4. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully they incorporate the touchscreen in a way that will make a lot of sense because that's what the game needed was better controls. I loved this game, um, and I think that I think it'll be good on on the Switch. 
So if you're interested, uh, June 5th, North America, and June 8th in Europe. Yes. I put that story on there for me. I put this next story on there for Dan. The Division passes 20 million players across PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, It's been out for just about two years, and the other day they announced the game just passed the 20 million mark, 20 million player mark. What I love about this is they said 20 million people Mm -hmm. have played it, which is twice the population of Sweden. Yes. Like, why does that matter to me? I already knew that 20 million was a lot. Good. It's to give you some sort of frame of reference. It's like when they tell you 274 (laughs) elephants could fit in this, and you're like, who the fuck? Right. Why does that matter? Uh, uh, So, anyway, that number probably includes uh, people who took advantage of free trials that have been offered. Uh, It's a big number. Uh, Apparently, the division has amassed a player base the size of the state of New York. (laughs) And to celebrate, uh, they're going to begin a series of events during March. Uh, There's going to be four global events, one each week. And it's going to bring its own special modifiers and rewards. You can also get a free sneeze emote right now. Um, uh, Let's see. Among a few other stats, 66 billion NPCs have been killed. And players average three hours of playtime a day. Um, There's another example of Ubisoft doing things right. Mm -hmm. Uh, They are... They seem to be the ones who really get... The, how the games with games as service system works uh, because they consistently add things and keep people coming back. Uh, granted, uh, they could probably start off a little better out the gate. Uh, <laughs> they get pretty poorly received upon release, and they slowly improve on them, uh, which is a testament to Ubisoft. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty big deal. And if you're still playing it, I constantly talk about getting a mechanic getting back into it and i never do um maybe get on for some of these events and see what they have to offer so as part of this uh dump of information this is the one that was most shocking to me a ps4 player has completed 7768 waves in resistance since the launch that's 100 a day in case anyone wants to do the quick <coughs> math on that yeah that guy or lady is bananas. I love some games, but that's a whole new level. Yeah, it's a lot. No lie. So yeah, it's good to see Ubisoft is is kept being able to carry on and keep their games alive like this. Uh, I think it's a testament to them, and congratulations to Ubisoft. Yeah, it's a lot of people. Roughly twice the size of Sweden. Yeah, population anyone, of New York. For anyone who does all metrics by the population of Sweden. So there's a story I'm about to talk about that's not on the news. Oh, shit. Breaking news. Uh, Floyd Mayweather. Some people know him as uh, Money Mayweather. Uh-huh. Floyd Money the Mayweather. Boxer. Yeah, boxer. For those that don't live where there's TV or entertainment. Uh, he says he's making his own video game. Mm-hmm. Um, as reported by TMZ. Fun fact, I like to get information from TMZ. You've talked about that. It's... Mm-hmm. So at his 30, 41st birthday, he told him he is already working on bringing uh, the best ever to video game consoles around the world. Mm. Uh, however, he's going to ensure, however it's done, that he has ownership. Uh, there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of rumors that EA is working on a new fight night, but Floyd made it clear to say he will not be in it unless he has some sort of ownership. I feel like people who are into boxing games uh, have wanted a good one for a long time. Fight Nights have been great, but they're few and far between. Now, did he say that it was going to be a boxing game? No, it could be a kart racer. Right, I was going to say, um, I feel like this announcement was very similar to It's a boxing to one. game. It's for sure a boxing game. Well, Kurt Schilling did the same thing. And lost out big. Yeah, in fairness, though, he over he overreached, and he doesn't have the the bank that Floyd does. Uh, okay, Floyd is incredibly wealthy. Uh, yeah, I know. So he could sell a jet and finish this game. Fair enough, but no, yeah, it's probably a boxing. It game. could be a match three tile game. I mean, we we don't know what it's... Floyd's into. 
But we assume that when he says bringing himself to a game, he means boxing. Probably. Well, maybe he's going to go the 50 cent route. Blood on the sand. <laughs> Check it out for anybody who didn't play that. That actually not the worst game. No, it's not. Mm. Bulletproof is worse. 50... Yeah, even that not like the worst game I've ever played. No, 50 cent bulletproof is worse. Than... Blood on the sand is better than bulletproof. Mm-hmm. I'd say that's fair. If you're ranking 50 cent titles, <laughs> I would go with that also. Uh, 50 cent also saying now he does not have that Bitcoin money for anyone who's interested. Yep. Turns out legally people would like them to check into that. And he says, nope, nope, never had it. Also the prime example of a guy who's made tons of good choices and somehow still has no money. Yes. Got very wealthy, then got in a contract with uh, vitamin, vitamin water, water, which was purchased by Coke. And all of, as, all of his advertising, all the marketing he did, he exchanged for ownership. And he's in movies? He's in movies. He's actually a pretty decent actor. Yeah, he's not bad. He's in that show Power on yeah, Stars. He's not bad. Uh, and then he also accepted payment by Bitcoin for one of his albums. Yes. So, and someone, if it's not if it's not 50 Cent, Curtis Jackson, is that his name? Yes. If it's not him, he has someone very intelligent above him uh, helping him make decisions. Yes. Uh, it sounds like he also needs a good accountant. That might though. be that same person who's stealing his money. You who's might helping want to him look, spend it all, right? Just saying, you might want to look into that there, Kurt. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe talk to maybe use your expansive video game knowledge to help Floyd. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh with his video game endeavor. Or have a chat with Wesley Snipes on how to get out of this one. Ooh. What's he doing now? Working at Starbucks? Uh Wesley Snipes? Yeah. Oh, no, he's doing movies. Costco. Straight, straight to video movies. <laughs> straight to Or straight no, to... he can't even get on Netflix. He's just straight no, straight on, to they're DVD. On, they're on Netflix. Gallows Straight Walkers one, so yeah, he, nothing, you know, he's low budget movies. Let's see, we'll not a bit. His name, his name doesn't not a big value anymore with the uh, millennials. Yeah, he's yeah, he's been out of the picture too long. Mm-hmm. That's what happens if you get out of the game. Hollywood just keeps keeps moving. But let me tell you something. From nineteen ninety to about two thousand two, Wesley Snipes was a motherfucking man. He was everywhere. Action movies. He was all good. He was great. What's uh Passenger Fifty Seven? Passenger fifty seven. Always great bet on movie. black. Yep. Great movie. Uh Passenger- the blades were the blades were fun. The blade movies were good. Uh fun. I like to say fun. I don't know if good's are right. They were fun. No, they were good. The first one was the first and second one were good. The third one not so much. The third one leaves some to be desired. Also uh, the most ripped up Ryan Reynolds ever. Yes. Uh, Blade three, right? Blade three, blade. It's actually Blade Trinity, right? He looked like he could have grabbed any person in that movie and ripped them in half with his with his arms. Yes, he was. Yeah, he was on that Brad Pitt Fight Club diet. Yeah, steroids is what that's called, <laughs> where you eat no food and you have zero body fat. Gosh, he was that dude was ripped, shredded. Jeez. Yeah. Now he looks normal. He looks fine now. He looks better now. You can look too muscly. I wouldn't not know. Like, yeah, not us, but people can look too muscly. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, he'd really take some, some swings. Christian Bale. He, well, that dude will go up and down for a roll like nobody. Yeah, he went from like 90 pounds for the machinist to 220 for yeah. Batman Begins. Yeah. He's doing that, uh, with that Dick Cheney thing now, right? Yep, where he's getting fat. It was fat again. Yeah. Yeah, he goes all out, and he's going to have some issues one day. Some, yeah. I, I got to believe that has a lasting effect on your body. I got to believe it comes back. Oh, it can't be good for you for to, sure. To hit you at some point. Cutting weight like that is, and having to keep it off for that long to film a movie, mm-hmm. there's no way that that's good for you. And then rapidly putting weight back on, like not. Was well, getting back to where he needs to be. Yeah, but you can't do that rapidly. You have to ease into it. Right. It can't just be like, oh, I'm there. It's a week. I gained 100 pounds. Be careful pounds. not to ease like Val Kilmer, though. I just ease for years. <laughs> yeah. He has eased. <laughs> he's, he's gotten a little chubby. He's better now, though, I think. I don't he think got he, super fat. He I got think, cancer. I don't think he gives two fucks anymore. I, I think he's had a good life. and He, set he a had few, throat cancer, right? Yeah. And, set a few and he cra- lost a bunch of weight. Said a few crazy things here and there, and now he's all good. Oh, he said some nuts, though. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I like Val Kilmer. I like Val, too. He's all right. Uh, he was at Nashville Comic Con, had the biggest line, though, all weekend. I believe it. People like Kilmer. I never saw him. We never could put eyes on him. Every time I went over there, he was gone. Well, he's one of those guys that don't do those kinds of things very often. So when he's there, yeah. it's a big deal. Yeah, rent, rent was due, I guess. <laughs> could be. <laughs> Just shoot over and do a quick one and then disappear. For his ranch? Yeah. You know, he owns like, like a Montana giant or something? ranch in Montana. Yeah. Yeah. Good for him. That's going to do it for the news. You had a bonus story in there about Floyd, Money Mayweather, the money Floyd. team. And then we talked about Val Kilmer. You're welcome. Uh-huh. You're welcome. To great taste. Or you are welcome. Or you are welcome. You you welcome. <laughs> I don't think anybody says it like that. You. Some people just drop that whole thing. They just say. I welcome. Welcome. They just say welcome. Thank welcome. you. Welcome. That sounds like hello, though. Welcome. How are you? No one says no one says that, though. No one says I, welcome Everybody when you walk assumes in. welcome is... You're welcome to a thank you. No, if you walk in somewhere, you can be like, welcome. Take your pants off. Make yourself at home. Okay, I got, you're right. It's contextual. Right. That's it. You just learned something. It's contextual. Yes. Not you, but the listeners. Yes, this has been Game Stitch Grammar Minute. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Grammar Minute. We got we to gotta find something that rhymes better, but I it's know. a start. That's all I had. I, it was off the top of my head. Yeah. No, I understand how it works. We gotta find something. It's gotta be a G. Yeah, but I can't think of any. Me either. I don't know. That's a tough one. Let us know uh, on Twitter at game underscore. Ooh, you know what we could call it. We could call it. We would need music though. <laughs> you could call it Game Stitch. Grandma time. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. You crossed the line right there. <laughs> You never cross the line with the MC of, of Hammers. That's probably true. You never cross the line. That's probably true. We got to be uh, careful. He's going to make us pay us because he's broke as fuck. Yeah, he's doing those command strips commercials. He's I, fine. He's No, he's broke as fuck. You think he's even doing those? He's probably getting yeah. like yeah. No. a couple grand every time he pops out one of those. Okay. Because you get why it's ironic because he's the Hammer. I know. Yeah, the so command you strips you don't nail. That's why it's good. That's why it's such a good fit for the two of them. Um, but shout out to MC Hammer. Don't sue us. Don't sue us. Sue us for what? We have less than he does. and He's broke as fuck. Yeah, but it sounds like a lot of trouble to have to go to court. Just don't show up. Oh, that's against the law for sure. <laughs> All right, it's going to do it for the news. Now we're on to my favorite segment, our newest, oldest segment. Gone But Not Forgotten, where we reach back in our gaming past. We dust off an old gym for you. We tell you why you should love it. We tell you why we love it. And hopefully you'll check it out. And it's your turn this week. It is my turn. So I had a game picked out. And then about three minutes ago, I decided I have already done that game. So I pivoted. Um, and I am doing... A virtual boy title, which I it's what I was originally going to do, but I pivoted to a different one because I can't remember if I did the other one. <coughs> uh, so I'll be talking about Mario Tennis for Virtual Boy. Um, came out July twenty first, nineteen ninety five. Obviously published by Nintendo. And for anyone who's ever seen the Virtual Boy, everything is all red. It's not a comfortable look. It makes your head hurt after about thirty minutes. But this tennis game is what I played more than anything. I love this game. I was going to play, I was going to do Wario Land, but I can't remember if I did that one. Uh, I can't so either. I pivoted to Mario Tennis. Mario Tennis is, uh, I think it shipped with the units, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm, that sounds right. Um, so I played the absolute mess because when I first got my Virtual Boy, it's the only game I had. Um, and I remember Mario Tennis fondly. And I went back probably 10 years ago and played it again and still felt pretty good about it. Uh, now, if I played it today, Having played real VR, Not so much, probably, probably probably don't feel as fond about it. But I will say the Virtual Boy is something totally different than like normal VR. It's weird like red vector VR thing. I don't know. But that's my gone but not forgotten. And you should just in general watch some virtu- Virtual Boy stuff and remember how we got here. Because that was way back when when that came out. 
95 and yes. Nintendo was already doing some nonsense. So check getting, it out. Getting into their VR. If you have a Gombinot for, for us or one you want us to shout out, hit us up, game underscore stitch on Twitter. Use the hashtag GBNF and we'll shout it out on this show. We will. We'll give you a old shout out. <laughs> Get real shouty outy. Oh, man. Speaking of shout outs. That was nice. It was smooth like butter. Smooth like butter. Speaking of shout outs, we did slash didn't get some this week. We kind of got more comments uh, from Thomas and Garrett. If you want to, if you want to shout out, all you have to do is support us at the ten dollars tier over at Patreon dot com forward slash Game Stitch. That's the first time we've talked about that. It's true today. Today, today. we've talked about it before. Today, yeah, right. So uh, Garrett says to us, and I'll actually take both of them this this time because I don't. You're probably not aware of them, right? I'm not aware. Um, but uh, Garrett says that uh, he's looking to catch back up with us because his new job has been hell. And he hasn't had a chance to really do much. He actually just recently caught up on three episodes ago. So, um, obviously been a busy, busy boy. So. I know that feeling. Appreciate you, Garrett. Let us know what you think when you catch back up. And uh, Thomas actually told us this week to, there was another beta for Sea of Thieves this week, weekend. And uh, Thomas told us to get our shit together. (laughs) <laughs> Thomas is trying so hard um, to peer pressure me into playing this game before it comes out. Yep. Here's um, here's what he sent me. That he said, uh, uh, "Gonna get on that beta tonight." And I said, "Probably not." You know, some stuff in between here. And I said, "I'm really holding off till it's out." He said, "19 days and two more scale tests." Just saying. I said, "Good point." And he said, "Do it. Spend it. It feels great." <laughs> To which I replied, this is how people end up on meth. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, peer pressure. Um, I love how excited he is for this game, and mm-hmm. I'm that excited too, but I want to be like a newborn the day it launches. When it comes out. When I I'm, I want to, yeah, me too, I want to, I'm, I'm in the same boat you are. Confused. Uh, yep. Totally mind blown. The not good, thing, good at anything. The good That's thing what I is, want. is Thomas can walk us through it at that point. Absolutely. I could use a guide. And I, and he can be my guy. He can be the the sensei. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Somebody to make sure that we don't just get immediately murdered. Exactly. So Because that's not fun. Also, a quick note to everybody, especially those of you that are Patreon describer, subscribers. Or um, describers. Or describers. We just wander around describing our Patreon. You subscribe. Um, I don't know if you noticed, because my understanding is not everybody reads it, but we had no... Uh, newsletter last month uh the reason being is because we're going to have an announcement a synopsis we'll put it this way a synopsis announcement announcement the middle of this month so you're actually getting two essentially a newsletter and a big written not newsletter but it's going to be an idea of something new that's going on uh and what it's about so you'll be getting that probably the middle end of this month somewhere so uh, don't be alarmed to be like these fucking guys. Uh, I promise we get that enough. We don't need it more. <laughs> we you, probably could have announced it sooner, but it is what it is. And we're not perfect. We're like you. You know, we're just trying to figure <laughs> it out. So so that's why. Don't be alarmed. We haven't forgotten. It's just March is going to be double good. We call it double D March. Ryan calls it double D March. It's extra good. Double the dose. Double the dose. That's what. Yeah, double dose March. Yeah, that's what double D stands. That's what double D stands for. That's in this in this situation. It does double right? dose March. That's the only thing you should ever stand for. <laughs> well, I can't speak for what people decide that things stand for, but in this case, it's double dose March. You're getting two. Count them two. One two. It's going to take you two fingers to get there. Uh, doses of said behind the scenes content yes so it's like that we never even missed one indeedy it is indeedy yes indeedy you think indeedy.com is something probably it should be it's pretty good it's probably where you can find jobs 
Nuts oh, indeed. Only like clown jobs. Indeedy. It's like fake jobs. <laughs> Show up for a carpenter job, it's a porn shoot. You're like, wait a second. This isn't what I was trying to do. Indeedy. Yeah, here, just sit, just sit on the couch. We got some questions we need to ask you. Yeah. If anyone uh, ever says that to you, leave. I feel like I've seen this before. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're just in an empty office room that has just a couch and a desk, and the guy the guy's face is blurred out. You should leave. Yeah, if it's probably not going to be blurred out in real life, though. I mean, <laughs> then you're fine. I don't think. Then you're fine. He's going to have one of those pixelized masks on. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I think he wears. He can't know his true identity. And it ain't because he's Batman, folks. <sighs> or maybe he is. He's probably not. He's not only Batman, I guess we should say. He doesn't have a day job. Got it. Right. <laughs> All right. I think that we've covered a lot of information. Ooh, we did a lot. If you want to speak to us, we're at Game underscore Stitch on Twitter. I am at Podcast Ryan on Twitter, and Dan is at Shirtless Dan. Remember, subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Game Stitch. Hit that subscribe button and click that little notifications bell so you know every time we go live or post a video... Uh, and remember, you can get this podcast absolutely everywhere that podcast services exist, and you should rate it wherever you listen to said podcast. And uh, we really appreciate it. We appreciate you, just in general, as a person. Yes, we do. Unless you're a bad person, and stop. No need for that. You can still listen, though. Yep, yep. So it goes five stars, even. But don't be a bad person. Now we're covered legally if they do anything, because we told right, them not to. Right, right. That's how this works. Don't try this at home, kids. I'll send an email to myself. It's fine, right? It's my idea now. <laughs> this has been episode 268. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>